Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining TopCon Solution Store's webcast on Autodesk Civil 3D Surveyors. Um, thank you all for joining us today. Before we officially start the presentation, I would like to go over a few housekeeping items. Time permitting, we will be having a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. So if you look on the panel there under the question section, please feel free to type in any questions. And once again, time permitting, Kevin Clausen, who's the presenter of today, um, will be able to answer those questions accordingly. I also did want to mention that this webinar is being recorded and you will be able to view it in the near future on our YouTube page as well as on our website. Something else that you can look for on our website is if you go to topconsolutions.com under the You Are Invited tab near the top right. That is a place that you can um, go and see any upcoming webinars as well that you may be interested in. So please feel free to check that out as well. My name is Diana Alarcon. I'm the Marketing Events Coordinator for Topcon Solutions Store. And once again, thank you for being with us this morning. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and hand the presentation presentation over to the one and only Kevin Clausen. <laughs> wow, the one and only, goodness, you're putting me on the spot there. Well, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I hope everybody is healthy and, and uh, sane. We're going through everything here, and I generally appreciate uh, uh, you, you all taking the time to join us this morning and and uh, take a look at some neat little features within Civil 3D as far as the survey side of things goes. And let's get rolling here. If we haven't met, I'm Kevin Clausen uh, from TSS. And, and uh, you know, I got to tell you, it blows my mind. I'm coming up on 20 years with the company. Uh, I believe it's September, if I'm not mistaken. And not to bore you with all this stuff here, but uh, again, if we haven't met there, uh, I have been doing this for quite a while, and I've worked with tons of different folks uh, on on whether it be private firms or or uh, private sector, whatever it may be. And my role has changed off and on throughout the years, and I still do a bulk of the training. But my main focus now is really going in, take a look at people's processes. And, and then hopefully uh, devising a plan where we can work on their template uh, just to streamline things and, and basically just implement Civil 3D within their, uh, within their firm or agency. So today we're going to be working on survey related information, obviously, and, and, and I attack this one a little bit differently. Um, <clears throat> I've done many a webcast throughout the years and uh, you know, often it's, you know, we're building a quick surface or, or whatever it is. And, and this this time around, I tried to find commands I thought that would make uh, just just be useful to you right off the bat uh, and 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 make some sense. Really, if, you know, lack of better words here, maybe I'm trying to fill in some of the holes here and there that, just to make you more productive right off the bat, like I said. And we'll start off with some stuff. A, a couple of you may have seen this. Uh, this may be a little bit of a repeat for a few of you here and there. But I want to show off a couple of quick little things when it comes to interface setup and just overall usability of the program. Then I want to take a look at some workflows. And I mentioned this a bit ago. I, I, I hopefully, I want you, when we leave here today, I want to give you a few things that you can immediately uh, implement within your within your you know daily workflows that uh, that are simple. Uh, perhaps you just haven't had a chance to explore them yet, and uh, you know just just to just to hopefully make you better. And then I was going to sneak in a little bit of our slick little uh, civil briefcase tools, and, and we'll have information later where you can get a hold of us and we can show these off. But they're really focused towards survey-related information. So let's get rolling here. And hopefully you can see that. I got my screen pulled up here. I'm going to switch over real quick. All right, so where I wanted to start today is, again, one of those little tricks uh, that 
hopefully as you watch this and you'll be able to easily you know pull this up on your end and do it so a lot of these little tips and tricks that i i guess i pulled out uh, I, I, there are things that are coming up again and again, uh, whether it be in classes or uh, or just just talking to folks, and 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 that's why I did them. So it may feel a little disjointed at times, is because I'm going to be bouncing from topic to topic. But hopefully we'll time all together. And please feel free to ask questions along the way, or or however we're going to do it there. And I'll, I or email me. I'll make sure my email is up at the end, and you and I'll definitely follow up with you. So the first thing I wanted to maybe show off is. This neat little tool that's been enhanced in 2020, and it's it's called the Drawing Compare tool, and very easy to access. You just uh, and the way I'm doing it is I I don't have any drawings pulled up. I just have my uh, my my screen there right right at the startup screen. And if you go up to the application menu, that big letter C in the upper left hand corner there, and I browse on down a bit, you'll see that there is a option there that says DWG Compare. Now set this up a little bit when this thing pops up or or, or actually maybe maybe I'll, I'll lay it out a bit better yet uh, this tool is a, a very quick and easy way to look at a couple of different drawings okay that and and what it does is well maybe I'll explain it this way I, I often see um, folks will uh, have multiple versions of the same drawing and and you know how this game goes uh, you know hour to hour uh, who knows you, you know you're you're popping open drawings maybe you did a quick save as whatever it is or and and what you're really trying to do is just figure out which drawing may be the most current drawing or what has been changed or if you have multiple people working on in the office working on similar drawings whatever it is so this will let me pull up two different drawings, and you'll see that on those two color, there's a green and a red, you'll have your base drawing, and you'll have a reference drawing. So I'm gonna browse to a couple of them here real quick. And the first one I'll pull up is, and I named him to keep it nice and simple, here's side example one, and I'll pull that up. And then the reference drawing that I'm gonna pull in, is side example two, and they're and again they're almost identical. Now when I open that, it's nothing more than hitting compare. Now again, these two colors, remember these, these can be changed. In fact, I can change them here on the fly. But I'll do a quick compare. It's going to take a second as it as it initializes, and you'll see these drawings pop up. And that was the first one, and now it's com it's doing a comparison behind the scenes. All right, so what it does is it, it in essence it overlays both of the drawings and uh, the base drawing it was the, the the startup drawing there in fact this might make it help make a little more sense here's a little settings tab uh, in 2020 they've enhanced it where it's nice and simple they just give us a neat little toolbar right here if I drop it down you'll see that it spells it out a little bit better here in red it says not in the current drawing or green is only in the current drawing and then there's a third one here that's kind of a gray scale or, or not a gray scale but a gray color that says no differences so as it compared those two drawings if we look back here a bit you'll see that anything that is gray or whatever color I choose they're identical okay and in this little uh, example, what we're looking at down here is there was a, a an adjustment to the uh, parking lot here and where this entrance came in. So if I if I zoom in here, you'll see that there's the there's the differences, and, and that gives me the ability also possibly to figure out which drawing was the latest and greatest. The uh, you know the the recent one there was a move to you can see where it shifted to the east. Now couple little things with this too if this is sort of a busy drawing as you're looking around here I can go up to that little settings tab and drop that down and I can say well uh, maybe I want to turn off any hatches that are possibly in there or any extra text pieces and it just cleans up the drawing further okay There it goes. I just put those hatches back on so you can see them kind of pop in and pop out there. All right, very good. Now, another thing that it allows us to do is 
it'll help isolate where uh, modifications have been made. So again, by dropping that down, you'll see that there's a revision cloud and currently my setting is rectangular. And what that's referring to, if I zoom in, you'll see that there is a overall, my computer's hissing at me here. Why is that not showing that? There it goes. I just was looking in the wrong spot. You can see that it's showing exactly where differences between those drawings have occurred. Now, I can streamline this a little further. If I drop that down again, instead of being rectangular, I could say do it as a polygon or polygonal. And what it'll end up doing, you can bounce up your sizes and what have you. And then it just traces it. If I zoom in, you'll see that now it traces those areas. Very neat. Now, the base drawing where we started, if I move over here, this is live or it's dynamic. So if I were to go to grab you know, a piece here and move it, watch what happens. Again, this is gray, meaning they're both identical. Yeah, um, they're both like pieces from both drawings. So if I move that down, you'll see that that automatically drafts a, a little revision cloud around that saying, hey, there could have been a problem here. So a really, really slick tool. And I've used it quite a bit. Like I said, uh, you know, multiple people working on drawings, you get a, you get a phone call you, and you have to quickly figure out which is which, you know, uh, when did, when, what, you know, I can't remember which one was the last edit or whatever it may be. So, and then all of this information can easily be saved out. I can save them in the same drawing or I can just say I'm done with that comparison and that's what that little checkbox does. And what that does is it takes me back to the base drawing where I started. So excellent little tool, very, very easy, nothing more, I'll cancel that here, nothing more than just at startup here, I just dropped down the application menu and went right into drawing compare. So very, very simple. Now, uh, moving on here a little bit, pull this up here. Okay, so so now we're kind of talking about some behind the scenes settings and 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 like I said, I you know, uh, not to duplicate too much uh, of things that I've done in the past, but uh, so I, I'm going to jump to some kind of key components here and there. I have a, you know, the Civil 3D has matured over the years. Everyone's building services, uh, you know, things like that. But, but uh, what I want to focus on is maybe a couple of key settings within it. Now, overall, just in my interface, I went ahead and took it back to like straight out of the box here. A few things that I like to do or, or want to show off, and number one is this. At the very top, this is just interface stuff before we get into uh, Civil 3D specifics. Uh, this little toolbar up here is called our, our uh, quick access toolbar. And it's very, very easy to customize. And a couple of things that I always customize and I show off and folks seem to like is first off this one here. This is our workspace. Now, there's only so much room on this quick access toolbar. So what I'm going to uh, do with this is, you know, el eliminate information that I don't necessarily need, and then I'm going to add to it. Now, this this is a redundant setting because if I scroll on down to the bottom right, you'll see that there's a little gear. This gear, if I drop it up, those are the exact same workspace settings. It's just, you know, what you're working in at any given time. So I'm already in Civil 3D. So to m move this information around or change it or 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 uh, customize it, it's nothing more than a simple right click. I can right click on that and say, remove that from the quick access toolbar and that disappears. Uh, what I like to run on it myself is the layers and you'll see why in just a second. So over here on the right hand side, I can, uh, or for that matter, anything on this uh, toolbar, uh, but I'm gonna right click on my layer drop down, and I'm gonna add that to my quick access toolbar and that shoots it up there at the top. Now, the reason why I like it, I was just talking about redundancies. Well, obviously, we can see the two there right now. But if I click on any type of Civil 3D entity, as you know, Civil 3D is, is uh, 
uh, uh, the ribbon is content sensitive. So when I select it, my ribbon changes. So if I needed to switch back over and figure out what layer that's on, I'd have to go back to my home tab and then go back to the tab that I was currently on. You know, it's just a lot of extra picks and clicks. And, and as you know, as the deeper you get into a project, almost the whole darn drawing is a civil 3D smart object or entity, whether it be alignment, profile, you know, surfaces, on and on and on. So this can be really, really handy. Now, um, other things, especially on the survey side of things that I like to add in would be like the uh, oh, bearing and distance for lines or arc information. Well, as you know, we'd end up having to switch over to like the that analyze tab and then slide over to the right there and pick this and go select a line to just to get a simple bearing and distance, whatever it is. So I'll often just click on it here and then I'll say add that to the quick access toolbar and you'll see that it's right up there. It, now it's just at my fingertips so I can be working throughout my drawing at any given time. I can then go right to that button, pick it, and then go select whatever it may be for a quick bearing and a distance. And it gives that information to me right on my command line. So uh, again, just trying to save you picks and clicks as you're as you're going through a you know a daily uh, you know workflow there. So all right, so that's great. Now all of this, whatever you add to this thing, it's nothing more than a simple right click, and we can remove it from the quick access toolbar at any given time. Okay. Now if you do change this up in the bottom right hand corner down here in that gear this is the, there's a one-time setting that you will have to do and i show this off in a lot of the classes so if i drop that up there you'll see that there is a uh, workspace settings option and if i click on that by default if i look down this by default the installation always has this do not save changes to the workspace you'll want to switch that uh, to automatically save and then whatever i add to this or or just in general to whatever it may be um, it, it'll save that and you know god forbid you had a crash where you switch switch between different workspaces without that setting it's always going to default back so that's just a quick way of, of you know adding and making sure those additions stick Okay, so good. Now, talking about some survey stuff here, let me just turn on some tool space. Again, I, um, I just wanted to show a couple of key settings. Uh, this is a, more of a style-based scenario, but, but I do run into this quite a bit. And, it's, and, I'm, and I'm referring to like points and, and styles, how styles work and sort of behind the scenes information. So there is a, a full-blown description key file in here and everything as these points came in. But a little scenario I'm referring to here is with just usability with points, okay? And I wanted to show off some of the point style information or, or settings that I found. Maybe maybe we'll throw this in air quotes, sort of best practices, if you will. So um, often I'll see it where folks will go out, they'll shoot in their information. As those points come in, the description key file takes over and makes sure it brings in the appropriate block uh, um, and, and so forth. And that's what we're looking at here. Okay, good, good. Now, if in my little pretend scenario here, there's an intersection up here and the surveyors go out, they gather the trees and then, and then at whatever point they may, they may be instructed to, to show certain trees that need to be removed for site uh, visualization purposes, uh, you know, coming through here, I can't, I can't quite see, so they might want to take this tree out. So they'll show in some of the prelim preliminary maps where that tree gets grayed out. And so we still see it, but it's grayscaled in the background. Okay, fair enough. So if I were to pick a tree, whatever it may be here, and and now that I've switched up my uh, my uh, uh, toolbar up here, and I'm just simply selecting that, expecting to drop this down. Oh, that's not good. There it goes. And, I, and I'm putting this on this tree removal, which again should grayscale in the background. And when I do that, you'll see when I hit escape here, nothing has changed. It's still green. Now, interesting, if I pick the uh, 
the the uh, point itself you'll see that it did in fact remove or move over to that tree removal layer that I had created but it didn't take on the properties of it and that's because of the behind the scenes settings in the point style so let's take a look at that so settings tab points point styles and somewhere in here there is a tree and if I click on this tree fair enough here's the reason why and this is one of the first things that I look at when people give me a template to review and see if we can clean up any workflows or streamline processes or whatever and inside the and, and by the way none of this is wrong however you're doing it you know if it works for you great uh, you know this is just a suggested workflow or, or or settings all right so on the display tab what's currently happening right now is there is a, a an embedded layer in here they're often referred to as like a component layer a sub component layer and those trees are going as as it comes to that description key file this point style tree is saying go to this layer. However, that's a, a, a redundant setting and it sort of eliminates uh, 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 what I often refer to as like fluid workflows, right? Uh, we would have to figure out a different way to attack this. Now, uh, styles work like blocks. And if I were to pick both of these here, and I change that layer instead of it saying, or instead of it being hard coded to V node, I'll just set it to zero real quick. Okay, and and I was just mentioning styles work like blocks, uh, just AutoCAD blocks. If they're zeroed out here, they'll inherit the properties of the layer that they're inserted onto. So by zeroing those, and if I OK this here. Now you'll notice that that did automatically update there, okay? And and now, in case you're wondering, well, wait a second, if I don't have my layer there, how does how does it know to put it on that layer? Well, that's where that description key file comes into play, okay? And if I just browse down to description key sets, I have one in here called solutions, and I'll take a quick look at this one. And lo and behold, there's that tree. So that's the raw description that was recorded in the field. And if we slide over here, the description key file will give it its layer. So even though both of those were the same, that if there was that redundancy that was taking place. It's going, to, uh, the description key file will place it on its appropriate layer for us. I don't necessarily have to have those layers embedded within my point styles. So that would take place, perfect. And now, if I were to, um, or, whoop, let me go back into my point style here for a second. Or go back into this tree one. So now those should be set to zero, so which is good, okay? And, and while I was here, I wanted to show a couple of other quick settings within this that you may take a look and see how yours are set up at the office there. And then these you know, may help out in the, in the long run. So as far as what I always change up is, is definitely this, the display, I let my description key file dictate the actual layer, the insertion layer. So that would be one of them. Under 3D geometry, this is uh, originated from an Autodesk template. Um, I switched it over. I like my settings to say, um, as opposed to saying use point elevation, if I drop that down, I'll say flatten points to an elevation, an elevation of zero. Okay, now all that's doing is graphically making all of my points come in at a coplanar elevation of zero, but the software is smart enough to know their true elevation. And if I build a surface from those points, it'll it'll work just as expected. Um, it, it, it will go out and pull the true elevation of those points from the database. So the advantage to that is if I'm playing connect the dots with, with uh, uh, points, lines, whatever it is, it's going to draw my lines at the horizontal distance rather than, depending on the clan you use, rather than a 3D polyline. Or if I'm querying between that information uh, from you know point to point or whatever it is, it's not giving me slope distances. So it's kind of having the best of all worlds, uh, flattened to zero. Okay. 
And what else do I want to show off in here? I think I'm just going to show those two for now. Okay, so fair enough. I'll okay this. And now if I, all of these points, if I were to, you know, whatever, or not points, well, I guess they are points, but trees, whatever. And I could switch these over. Come on. There it goes. And you'll see that when I clean that up, those truly not only switched over, but also took the properties of that new layer that I gave it. Okay. So good, good. Okay. So moving on here a little bit. Now um, I wanted to get into some some surface information. Well, maybe before that, let me show another little thing. I'm going to pepper it with little tips and tricks along the way. Um, one little tool that I like to use in here is uh, oh, uh, on the survey side of things is inversing between points. Um, I'll often see where folks will go into Civil 3D and they're and they're actually um, doing like distances or picking P for points and picking point to point and and there's a nice little trick. This is and this is kind of one on one stuff, but just in case you didn't know it was actually there, uh, there's a great little command here by uh, by going up to the top here to my analyze and I'll just play with these points here and and notice I, I purposely just put these rebars marked in here those are actual points obviously but but what I did with it is I, I didn't put the point number on purpose you know if we had them we could punch them in but I'll, sh I'll show you what I'm talking about here so from that analyze tab I'll go over to this tool called the inquiry tool and that pulls it up and it just looks very similar to a uh, a properties dialog box. And in essence, it sort of is. But what it lets me do is there's all kinds of different things that we can access. And if I, I drop this down, you'll see that there's points, point inverse. And it pulls it up blank here. Now, maybe you're doing, a, a, oh, you, you've gone out, you've gathered several points in the field. You're trying to figure out you know, the basis of bearing or, or, you know, what, what points tie better, whatever it is, what I can do then is I can just go down to the top where it says point number one. And if, and if the number was there, great. Um, if it's not, then I can just select that little, those three dots there, the, I think they call it an ellipse, ellipsy, something like that. And by selecting, you'll see in my command line, it says pick a point object. And in this case, I'll just select that first one and it gives me uh, information associated to that, that individual point. And then down below, you'll see that there is a point two, so the, the point that we'd be comparing it to. And I could do that same thing. Again, if I knew the number, if I saw it there, I just would punch it in. But in, that, in this case, I'll just hit those same little three dots and I'll go select that point. And what it now does, they've actually beefed up the interface a little bit. You'll see that it kind of draws a, a, a line across from those points. Now, it's not really there. It's just showing what you're comparing. I think that's kind of slick. And then, of course, we scan down a little bit here. And point one. So there's our direction and there's our horizontal distance. While I'm in this tool, um, I, I can say with for point number two, I could quickly look at other points and start making these decisions doing that. So there's there's the, the different uh, direction and a different distance there. So nice and easy, jump to that other one. And just something to, to, to uh, quickly get you through. Now, uh, one other thing about this, I don't know if you noticed this, um, but on the uh, uh, when I first selected this, the information was it was a little bit looked like a bunch of little dots. Sometimes you have to actually take your your toolbar and dock it, and then it shows up, and then you and then once it's once it's shown, it's fine. You can undock it, move it around, all that kind of thing. So I'll get rid of that for now. Okay, now I may leave this one in the background here. Uh, now I wanted to get into a couple other little things maybe talking surfaces. And uh, I, I kind of poked through s surface settings and, and, and what have you to try to locate some stuff that maybe you're not doing day in and day out. 
Okay. So let me open something up here. And this one seems to be one that I'm running into all the time. And in fact, uh, I received this drawing from a client here recently. And um, I, I'm seeing more and more surveyors are now uh, uh, going in and uh, uh, actually creating models for, for motor grading or, or whatever it may be. And you'll see there's this, this uh, drawing in here. Now, this drawing was received from an engineer and our task would be to actually build a, a surface to it. And there's you know different ways to do it. But if I uh, take a quick peek at this, you'll see a couple of things. Number one, if I look at the, uh, uh, th there is no surfaces in here. I just switched to my prospector. This is a drawing that's been dumbed down for delivery. And that's an affectionate term that we use. Uh, basically what they've done is this, I, I, I think this was exported out. So it's sort of a nuclear explode that just blows up all of the entities into just lines, arcs, and circles. And in fact, if I hover over these, you'll see that they're just a bunch of little triangles right now, okay? So what I'm gonna do is build a surface to this and there's a key little hidden setting that, that we can uh, utilize to make this you know, work exactly as expected. So first thing here, I'll zoom in and I'm gonna pick any one of these diamonds, or diamonds, um, I'm thinking grading, uh, triangles here and I'll do a quick right click and do a select similar. Okay, so that's just gonna go out and pick all of those tin lines. Then from there, if you haven't used this command, I'm gonna right click and um, this is an object isolation and I'm gonna say isolate object, isolated the selected objects. So that'll cook it down to just those, those uh, tin lines, where they're actually triangles. All right, fair enough. So I'll, create myself a quick surface and and you know this game here I'll do something like let's call this uh, what should I call this I'll just call it uh, FG whatever and then sliding on down here uh, the style I am going to double check this style real quick because again, there is nothing in here, so I want to make sure that there's a couple little settings here and there. Um, I want to see those triangles in both 2D and in 3D. Good, good. Fair enough. I'll okay this. And now we have a surface. I'll expand that out and I'm going to define it. So looking down this list, I'm going to define it from drawing objects. This is one that doesn't get utilized all that much. And remember, they're, they're, they are uh, triangles. So if I uh, say add, and, the t and these drawing objects, this is everything that we can add in. Uh, it, it, we can build a surface from anything, as long as it has a northing and easting and a zenith. So in this case, I'm gonna do it from uh, 3D faces, okay? Now, there's a key setting in here I'm, uh, that I'm gonna show off in just a second, but I'm gonna say, okay, and I'm gonna go grab these. And if I zoom in, to kind of see the work that we did. Now in these tight coverages, I'm sure these were created via corridor, but those look identical, but you can see how those red lines are not quite exact. There's in this intersection here, and then there's this pond up top here as well that's not being uh, picked up. In fact, if I grab those just to see what we got going here. And the old object viewer. If I look at this, it's close, and this is a, a really neat site. It's a bunch of padded out uh, su a subdivision, but that's clearly wrong and everything else. So I'm going to get rid of that in instance there, delete that out, and then I'm going to go ahead and force a rebuild on that surface so it goes back to where we started. And then I'll just do that exact same thing. Remember, it's drawing objects, right click on it. I'm gonna do a quick add. And then 
it will be that same thing, 3D faces. But here's that uh, setting that I want to show off today was this maintain edges from the object. And if I say toggle that on, I can describe this, do the exact same thing, grab it all, and now they, it's perfectly mirrored those tin lines. And what we should have got after it was all said and done, I rotate this back a little bit. And you can see that pawns exactly as it, it should have been. Okay. Now, uh, I selected that because I, I happen to be working with, a, like I said, a lot of folks that are actually creating or recreating surface information that was engineered elsewhere, and, and they're, they're, they're preparing the models to be then kicked out into, uh, um, into uh, you know, a, a form of a motor grading system, All right? Okay, good, good. Now, the next little trick that I wanted to do today is show off uh, uh, a couple of commands within the surfaces, and I'll kind of call this out. There's there's basically two main things that I wanted to show, and I wanted to show this one, and, and they just don't get utilized, I think, as much as they they could. Um, it's it has to do with uh, boundaries, and the one boundary that I wanted to show off here. Let me right click. Oops. I'm going to do it in a different drawing here, but I wanted to just give a, a quick name. So, looking down these, the the types of boundaries you have: outer, show, hide, and the newest one is called data clip, and that's the one I wanted to focus on with you today. Now, I'm sure you've all used boundaries. Uh, you build a surface. Uh, you may have some cross triangulation here and there, and then the uh, um, you, you may place a boundary that's that's cleaning up the edges of it. And uh, and then you would use this outer boundary, and basically it just you, you know there's different options. It trims it right to that that boundary of where you've specified, and it saves you a ton of uh, cleanup work when it comes to the surface. Um, so we've all done it. But the data clip boundary definitely is the probably the least used. And what it does is it um, it actually eliminates truly eliminates the data in the drawing that's external. Of, of that boundary. And, and the idea and where I'm going with this is uh, you may have, I'm seeing this more and more, uh, whether it be LIDAR or massive point files, you know, whatever it is that we can actually calculate the data and truly leave the rest of that information external from the drawing. So it's not like bringing in tons and tons of points, building a surface, and then adding a boundary, but you still have that information that's residing, even though we don't see it, it still resides in there. So that's, this is what I want to show. The second one it, within this, let me cancel this here real quick. The second big piece out of this that I wanted you to get is how we add the data in, and that's called point files. We're gonna do it via point files, okay? So this is excellent for, for LIDAR. Uh, I've dabbled with certain point cloud information, uh, you know, whatever it is. Again, I'm seeing just tons and tons of data uh, as, as uh, uh, or data sets are getting larger and larger, I should say. So I'm gonna blow this away, one away for now. And I may come back to this, we'll see, in case there's questions, whatever. And I'm gonna pull up this drawing. Pull up here in just a second. There it goes. I got a little leg on my side, so it seems to be working now. Okay. So, so what what this is representing? I I, I did a I don't know a, 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 a different session dealing with lidar, but. Uh, I'm going to show a couple behind the scenes settings, how to get this in there, and then utilize that data clip boundary. Now, what we're looking at here, it's, it's uh, in the background, this was just brought in via uh, map, a GIS, and our subject of our area is right here. Okay, and I'm going to use that uh, eventually here as that boundary, that data clip boundary. 
in yellow. So this is sort this is our subject, okay? And prior to bringing that in, um, I am going to show a couple of other little settings that we'll play with here just to streamline that information uh, prior. Now, now uh, this this data set, the the one that I have, it's it's a lidar. It I believe it's um, oh there's almost a million points in it, and clearly, as you know, I mean just a couple of years ago we we couldn't bring more than two million points into a, a drawing. Now it's uh, you know apparently it's uh, you can bring it in much data as you possibly can, but we all know that you know your computer resources aren't going to push it around. So so that's one thing that I'm trying to do. Now, if it was a million points, and like, you know, we all know we wouldn't bring it in like that, but instead of going up to like insert points or coming through the survey database, whatever it is, that would, that it, it would bring in 1 million points. So we'd have 1 million X's or nodes. Then we'd have 1 million point numbers, you know, on top of that and an elevation and so forth. So and, and without doing anything, it, it just, it would be ludicrous. You, you wouldn't do that, but, but you kind of get the idea. So what I'm suggesting here is if you have massive point files, this little workflow routine is going to save resources tremendously. Okay, so uh, how how do we go about doing that? Okay, and there's a couple of behind the scenes settings that I'm set up up front. Uh, when you're dealing with these massive amounts of data, it's always about you know limiting the amount of data that's being shown at any given time. So I'm going to set up two things. I'm going to set up a a surface style and, and the way it shows the data once it comes in the drawing. And then I'm also going to show off um, a, a format little trick that it's a point format. Uh, and, and we're going to say use every fifth point. Okay. So for starters, then, how do I want to go about this? I'm going to switch to my settings tab. We could do this on the fly, as you know, but I'll do it in here just so it makes a bit more sense. So in settings under surface, there's surface styles. And I'll drop this down, and I'm just going to steal one of these Autodesk uh, styles that are already pre-built for me. So I'll grab this one here called uh, Five and Twenty Five Design, whatever, and I'll copy this up front. And I'm sure you've wrestled with these in the past. Now I can't help myself. Uh, give me a shout via you know, call me or or email me. Uh, can't help myself when I'm using these styles here. There's just so much, there's so many layers in here that don't necessarily need to be in here. Uh, we can eliminate uh, several of these. And uh, this uh, points back to when I was playing with the points, right? The, the uh, um, um, point style where I zeroed those out. Many of these can be zeroed out. And, you know, I'm always trying to figure out ways to cut down on uh, uh, overall, you know, uh, what I refer to as layer bloat, just layers okay but give me a shout and i can i can help you out with that or you know give you some ideas point you in the right direction whatever but what i'm going to do on this style here first i'm going to go to my contours this is a a really big flyover so i'm going to go down off the bat and i'm going to change up the actually let me let me switch the name here real quick um information i'm going to say these are going to be as We'll call these something like, how about 10, we'll say 10 and 50. So we'll have our majors and our minors at 50. And then I think on top of that, just to give it a little better name, I'll say grid, just so it's a bit more descriptive. I'm going to build this with a, as a uh, not truly a grid surface, but how that that information gets uh, shown off in the drawing once 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 we bring it in. So 10 and 50 will be our intervals. Then I'm going to switch to my grid, and I might go bigger than this, but just for speed here, I think I'm going to say my interval. I'll leave my primary grid at 25, both uh, primary and secondary. So it's going to make these 25 foot squares, if you will. Okay, good enough. Then I'm going to switch over to my display tab. And if I look at this in 3D, how do I want to see it? And I'm going to go ahead, just a side note here, I may be 
cautious on this how you know how big this this you know surface is i may turn off the contours up front but i i've tested this and i know it's going to work out okay so i am going to leave my major and minor contours on so that'll work i'll leave the border on but what i did want to change up is in model when i flip this and take a look at and, and see what's you know how it's been triangulated the 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 key thing is there's so many points that are going to come in I don't want to see it in triangles. That's just going to make a massive drawing. And if you pick the surface, it has to, you know, cook for a long time until it can finally select everything. So I'm just going to turn that off. But I do want to see grids. So it's just a different way of viewing that data as it comes in. Okay, so we got that all set up. And as a quick uh, recap on that, what I did is I copied a surface. I renamed it to uh, major. Uh, 10 foot minors, 50 foot majors, it's gonna be created within a grid format when we view it. Um, then I went to my contours and changed up those intervals. And I went to my display tab and just made it look a little bit different how we're gonna visually see it as it comes in, especially in model there. So fair enough. So that's now in place. Now, prior to bringing that in, the other little thing I'm gonna do is um, set up a format. And, and I think I'll do that one on the fly. That way it might make it a little bit easier. We could look through our, our settings tab here and locate them, but um, this, this is as good as any. So I'll switch back over to Prospector to actually do the work here. And I'm gonna right click on this and I'm gonna create a surface. And I'll name this surface, uh, oh, we'll call it, I don't know. We'll just call it LiDAR or whatever. And then my style, I'm going to switch it to that new one that I just created. There's that 10 and 50, fair enough. And all I've done is create a, what's referred to as a container, meaning the surface is there, check, check, but it still has to be defined. And I look down this list, and how we're going to define this is this secondary part here that I wanted to show off called point files. I don't think this one gets utilized enough. So what so what this does is it is you know in fact if I right click on it you'll see it's, it's this easy it's everything's a right click as you're adding data to a surface. But if I right click on it and do an add, it's going to look very similar to like a point import dialog box. But we're not truly importing points. What we're doing is we're linking the surface to this external point file, okay? And, and what it's gonna do is calculate those points externally and then only bring in the finished product, only the surface itself. So I'm actually leaving the civil 3D points in the background, or no, there, excuse me, no civil 3D points. I'm actually leaving the points out of the drawing altogether and only bringing in the finished product. So when I was using that example of a million points, I've just saved at least a million visual entities that we'd have to see in the drawing, okay? Now, I'm gonna make a connection and uh, just like if I was browsing out to any old point file, there's that one in here, it's a Easting Northing Zenith. So that's, I just threw that in there so we see or have a good idea of what, what I'm looking for. So there's the link. Now down below here, we have to specify the format, or I always refer to it as like the language of that file that's coming in. So in this case, what I'm going to do is grab, it was ENZ, that's why I typed it in there, just keep it simple, and it's broken up by or delimited by commas. So I'm going to, now if I just bring that in, it's going to bring in tons and tons and tons of points, uh, or point for calculation, I should say. So I'm going to click on this uh, file formats here, and I'm going to go find that same exact one, ENZ comma delimited there. And what I'm going to do is copy it, and I'll and I'll change it up just a little bit. I'll I'll, I'll leave it in that ENZ, but I'll say something like uh, comma delimited, and maybe I'll throw in here uh, a term like filtered or whatever. Okay. And then here's this little additional step or trick is it's still reading the language or the format there, ENZ with common delimited. But one extra little component I have here is I can say sample down here. 
and and this is probably way more info or, or way more data than I would need for this surface. This this may be just a a quick um, uh, who knows we're, we're at that conceptual phase. We're bringing this data in, and then we can go out with a terrestrial survey, survey it, and then further uh, enhance the accuracy and precision of that surface. So this is sort of that starting point. So I'm going to say in this case, sample every fifth point. So it's just remember this is just a machine gunning of laser shots that took all of these you know points and it's just going to take every fifth one when i do this so i'll say okay and then i'm going to go ahead and select that from my list there it is the filtered and as that sifts through we can take a quick little peek here and fair enough we have everything in place and then i'm going to say okay and this could take a second here to cook. And you can see my blue bar going across the bottom down there. Now, again, I probably would not have had my contours on, but I, for visual purposes, I wanted you to be able to see it uh, as you're watching this here, exactly uh, our, our next step. So the, the, the key piece in this is I wanted to show off this data clip boundary. And this behaves just like a surface, just any other surface. It, it, but where it's different, again, is there is no civil 3D points that have been brought in. So I'm going to now add that boundary. And I'll right click on boundaries up here. I'll do a quick add. And I'll just call this, uh, I'll call it clip to keep it simple. And the type of boundary is that data clip boundary. There is no curves in this. I just drew it as a rectangle, so I'll leave it. There's no reason to, to uh, mess around with the mid-ordinate. I'll say OK, and when I select it, here's the, here's the only trick that you have to remember here. It added it, but nothing happened yet to the surface, and it's because of, of how I did the workflow, and this is super common. Um, I had to see where that surface was first as it came into my drawing uh, and making sure that I, you know, everything's apples to apples. This data clip boundary, what it does is it, we added point, we added point files. So I mentioned that it went out and calculated that data externally. And then it, then it comes into the, um, you know, only the surface is coming in. What the boundary or the data clip boundary does is it's it's almost as if it's like a portal looking only in this specific area on that out on that uh, that point file where it's coming from. So again, I brought the surface in first so I know exactly where I'm at. If my boundary was in the wrong place and I said only bring the data in 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 the wrong place, nothing would come in. So here's a quick adjustment: is I would go to that surface right click on it and we go into the surface properties and there's tons of slick little you know routines in here for us to 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 uh, play with uh, you know build operations and what have you but down below is where this information was uh, you know brought in the first thing was it, it imported that point file and then it says add the boundary all I'm going to do is pick and swap the two around so it's going to say now use utilize the boundary first and then import that point file it'll force me to rebuild it when i okay this that'll cook down a little bit and lo and behold we only have the data within that area okay and if i pick that surface this is the whole idea here I'll, I'll select it this direction here. Come on, friend. There it goes. <laughs> and that, friends, is the name of the game. Huh. Imagine if you will. 
Um, quite honestly, I haven't ran into any problems with that, so I don't think you will either. Um, but with that, what it what I should have seen is when I dumped that into the into the object viewer, we would have seen perfect little squares all over the place, 25 foot grids, and it would have been a nice little way of uh, you know viewing that. So I'm stuck in a scenario here. That's no way to do a webcast. I just want you to see the startup screen again. Maybe we'll get lucky and that'll all come back together. And for those of you, I know probably a bulk of you out there. Um, yeah, it happens to everybody. I'm not going to wrestle with it here. Yeah, I will. Let's try it one last time. All right. And then after all of that, that's what I was shooting for. So those grids show it off nicely and it's much smoother. And ironically, <laughs> I was showing that because it cuts down on crashes. And of course we get one there. Okay, and I got one last thing to show here and I'll open up any questions there uh, you may have. I just wanted to show off this uh, uh, one, at least one thing here, if nothing else, a slick little tool up here or, or set of tools uh, called, and it blew mine all out too, excellent. There we are. No, we're good, good. Um, uh, the uh, uh, TSS civil briefcase tools. And, 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 and as a whole, these briefcase tools do several different things. Um, they basically just streamline overall processes throughout. And, and, it's, and there really is something for everybody in this. There's survey related commands and or tools. Uh, and there's also uh, uh, you know, engineering side of things, and then uh, the, quite a few of them also blend between the two. But I thought this one might be kind of neat to show is uh, one in here called stations and offset to points. Um, if you've played with Civil 3D and you're trying to create a quick cut sheet of say points, maybe these are uh, slope stakes or you know daylight lines or whatever it is, and you can see that here is uh, several different points in here. I just put them in called calc, okay? Now, if you've done this, uh, you know, this, the, these are all going to be in reference to our center line alignment, both left side, right side. But if you've, you've tried to create stakeout sheets or for that matter, just inside your drawing, as you, as you run the routine, it pulls every single point that's in that drawing. So what I wanted to do a little different is just show off how this thing works. And there's nothing to it. It's incredibly simple. You basically say, I've already created a, a, a point group for these, by the way. So I'm gonna go up to my add stations offset to points, and this will pop up here. And, and this little command as it starts up, it says, how do you wanna select these? Do I wanna go physically go select them? Or I've already created a group that I just called calc. I just put a quick point group from it. Then it says, select your alignments. And I believe that's the main road here. But if there was a, say, a, a, a T intersection here, and I wanted these points to reference both alignments, I could do, I could do exactly that. Okay, there's all types of different settings in here where we can add prefixes to sides or, or drop negative and positive values, or whatever it is. And I'll just say, okay. And then what it did, now we don't see too much yet, but if I were to pick one of these, 
and just go into my edit list points. Well, this is still business, business as usual here, but as you start sliding way over to the right, you'll see that there is additional new codes that have been built in. There's station sides, offset, there's the left side, and, and, and so forth. So there is, it actually brought in what they call point components that we can create a table, kick this information out into a, a you know, file format, whatever. But I've already set it up here a little bit, and what I could do then is pick any one of these points and do an add a table. And the table that, and this is how you always do it, it's just a matter of again having ad additions to it. And what I want to actually use is this one called offsets. And then I'm going to go ahead and pick, right now it says currently no points selected. I'm going to go ahead and just grab that group that was already previously created. Good, good. Everything would re remain dynamic if I wanted to. And when I say OK, and if I go place this, and we'll zoom in and take a look at it here, you can see that there's the points that I had added in. There's their station. And this probably, this may be more information. All of these can be arranged. We've got point number, station, offset, elevation, description. There's our northern and eastings. Notice how I have the left side with an L, the right side with an R. So I'm starting to run long here, so I'm going to stop there and open it up to any questions that you may have. Thank you so much, Kevin, for all of that information. Um, so in terms of questions, if we do not get to all of them today um, at this time, uh, Kevin will receive all of these questions. He'll be able to answer you in a timely manner, so um, your questions will get answered um, I'll start with a question here from uh, Todd Talon, and I apologize if that's not how you pronounce your name. Good old Todd, how are you? <laughs> so Todd is asking today, um, how did you get LiDAR points into a comma delimited text file? We typically download um, period LAS files from Digital Coast, etc. Yeah, th this file format was actually uh, uh, cooked down uh, within the software that was originally uh, recorded in. Um, I, I forgive me that this is that data is a couple years old. I can't remember how it was gathered, but it was just just post processing. And 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 Todd, maybe I'll give you a shout after. Um, uh, but you know there it, that wasn't done within Civil 3D. That was just in a post processing software. That and then what they did is once they kicked it out, they just took out the. Uh, uh, information that wasn't relative uh, to the um, uh, to the point file. That's how it was delivered to me. Okay, another quick question here from a Michael Monocle. Um, can you grab the revision clouds? Uh, uh, say that again? Can you grab the revision clouds? And that must have been uh, oh, probably back in the, can you grab them? Um, yes, uh, I believe what you're referring to is in the, that drawing compare routine. Can you select those? Yes. Um, they are dynamic to the entities bet between those. Um, I already uh, jumped out of the drawing there. But what you can end up doing on, well, during that drawing compare, you're in your base drawing, and the second drawing that comes in is truly exactly that. It's a comparison drawing. So the way the routine is set up is that revision cloud, whether it's going to be a great big rectangle, I switched over to a polygonal approach, and it just kind of shrink wraps it on into the, 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 the two drawings where there's a difference. But if I... Um, one of the options is you can actually save the drawing so it's all kind of embedded together and then you can actually grab those revision clouds. I did actually grab the, the revision clouds as far as selection goes, but um, I, there's not a ton I can do with it because it's dynamically linked to a, a combination of those. And, and Mike, it's good to hear from you. I haven't talked to you in a while. Another brief one before we end here today. Um, back on the comparison tool, this is from a Bill Patton. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you say the highlight option can be made into different line types? Um, uh, the highlight option. Uh, Bill, I may have to get back to you on that. Um, uh, as far as the revision class, I think it just puts, I, I haven't been asked that before. I, 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 I don't want to tell you wrong. Um, 
uh, if you could make sure we have your contact information. I, I believe all it does is give you the, the, the ability to do the revision cloud, but you can make it larger and smaller though. You can play with the, the, uh, uh, the arcs that are in the revision cloud. You can make that bigger and smaller. Okay, perfect. Thank you again, everyone, for joining us today. Thank you, Kevin, for this information. Um, like Kevin said earlier, please feel free to reach out to us. This webinar is being recorded and will be available on our YouTube page as well as on our website. Um, so if you have any questions, we will get we will get them answered. There's Kevin's information on the screen, actually. Um, if you want to view that information. All right. And Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, sorry, friends. Uh, it's not recognizing it. I had to, oh, I know what it is here. I can do this. There we go. Make yeah. that a little bit bigger. So real quick there before everyone, uh, feel free to email me there. And I will follow up. Okay, thank you everyone for joining us today. As Kevin said earlier, um, everyone here at Topcon Solutions Stores hopefully, you know, certainly hopes that you're all in good health and staying safe out there. So thank you.